This engaging film recounts the gripping true tale of the fierce competition to obtain global licensing rights for the universally popular game Tetris. The story takes the audience on a thrilling journey through the complex world of legal battles, business negotiations, and personal rivalries, all fueled by the desire to control the iconic puzzle game that has captured the hearts of millions. Welcome to Rapid Movie Recap, the channel that summarizes movies faster than you can blink. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and hit the bell icon so you never miss our rapid insights. Want to make sure you catch every witty remark? Click the CC button to enable subtitles. And hey, while you're at it, show your love for our channel by checking out our oh-so-trendy merchandise down below. It's the Rapid Movie Recap Way. In 1988, video game promoter Hank Rogers of Bulletproof Software attends a convention, attempting to promote the challenging board game Go, which he describes as chess but harder. Despite his best efforts, nobody seems interested, and even the woman he hired to help with promotion is drawn to another game. Intrigued, Hank approaches the Tetris booth, and despite his initial doubts, he becomes instantly addicted to the game. Later. Hank meets with bank manager Eddie and tells him about his newfound obsession with Tetris. He explains that he's now the licensee for PC, game console, and arcade rights to the game. Hank recounts the history of Tetris, starting with its creator, Alexei Pajitnov. Four years prior, Alexei was a programmer for the Russian government, but he created games in his spare time. With the help of his co-workers, he transformed Tetris from a simple game using falling parentheses to a visually appealing one with colorful blocks. This change fueled its growing popularity. Two years later, Robert Steen of Andromeda Software discovered Tetris. Steen made a living by buying game properties in Europe for a low price and selling them for a profit in the United States. He relentlessly pursued Alexei's bosses until they took his licensing request to Allure. Steen later traveled to London to meet billionaire media mogul Robert Maxwell of Mirrorsoft and his haughty son Kevin. They negotiated an international licensing deal, which granted Steen royalties. Continuing his story, Hank tells Eddie that he recently visited Nintendo HQ in Japan to meet with CEO Hiroshi Yamauchi. He presents Tetris to Yamauchi, who is impressed by the game. Although Yamauchi initially offers $500,000 for a buyout, Hank negotiates a partnership instead. He convinces Yamauchi that their collaboration would be as iconic as Mario and Luigi or Zelda and Link. To seal the deal, Hank asks Eddie for a $3 million loan to produce Nintendo cartridges and arcade consoles. Eddie agrees, but only after Hank accepts increased interest rates and offers his house as collateral. In his Tokyo apartment, Hank discusses his recent business ventures with his wife Akemi. She expresses her concerns about the deal, but Hank points out how absorbed their children are in Tetris, noting how the house is unusually quiet. His eldest daughter, Maya, seems particularly captivated by the game. During a phone call with Kevin, Hank learns that Kevin and his father have already sold the arcade rights to Sega in Japan. Frustrated, Hank returns to Nintendo to speak with Yamauchi, requesting residuals in advance. Yamachi invites Hank to meet his colleagues in Seattle. In Seattle, Hank meets with Nintendo's president, Minoru Arakawa, and VP, Howard Lincoln. They introduce him to the Game Boy, their groundbreaking handheld console set to launch with Super Mario Land. However, Hank convinces them that Tetris should be included as a packaged game, and he promises to secure the handheld licensing rights. Hank then travels to London to meet with the Maxwells, who are already in a tense meeting with Steen. Steen confronts them about not receiving his payment. Hank steps in and requests to buy the handheld rights, but the Maxwells don't provide a clear response. After Hank and Steen leave the meeting, Kevin questions his father about missing money from employees' retirement funds, but Maxwell brushes it off, focusing instead on acquiring Tetris. As they depart, Hank and Steen appear to reach an agreement on the handheld rights. Arakawa and Lincoln call Hank, informing him that Steen is selling the handheld rights to Atari for $100,000 as payback to the Maxwells for not paying him. Determined, Hank decides to travel to Moscow to negotiate with Alorg and secure the rights himself, despite Arakawa and Lincoln warning him about the dangers of visiting communist Russia. Upon arriving in Moscow, Hank meets Sasha, a young woman who becomes his translator. Despite her cautioning him about the potential trouble, she guides him to Alorg. There, they meet a Lord President Nikolay Belikov, and Hank explains his business proposal. Through Sasha's translations, Hank learns that Alorg only licensed PC rights, not console or handheld. Hank presents Belikov with a personal copy of Japanese Tetris, but Belikov believes it's an illegal copy. Despite being asked to leave, Hank persuades Belikov to meet again to discuss the deal's terms. As they leave Alorg, Hank is confronted by menacing KGB agents who demand he leave the country. 
Meanwhile, Kevin arrives in Moscow and meets with Valentin Trifonov, a member of the Central Committee of the Communist Party and head of the Department of Foreign Trade. Thanks to the Maxwell's connections to Mikhail Gorbachev, they believe they have an advantage in acquiring Tetris. The following day, Hank and Sasha return to Alorg and meet Alexei for the first time, along with Trifonov and his associates. Trifonov accuses Hank of illegal practices, such as using a tourist visa under false pretenses, while Alexei is also initially skeptical of Hank's intentions. Velikov reveals that the arcade rights to Tetris were never sold to anyone. Steen and Kevin separately arrive to meet with Belikov while Hank examines the signed contract, concluding that Steen stole the arcade rights. Belikov presents Steen with a new contract for the handheld rights. Afterward, Alexei gives Hank and Sasha a ride home. Kevin meets with Trifonov again and discovers that they had been spying on his meeting with Belikov. Trifonov admits to Kevin that communism in Russia is nearing its end and expresses his desire to benefit from their deal. Unbeknownst to Kevin, Trifonov is being bribed by Maxwell to help secure Tetris. That night, Hank visits Alexei's home and shares dinner with him and his wife, Nina. Initially, Nina suspects that Hank really did steal Tetris, but he manages to convince them of his honest intentions. Alexei then shows Hank the original version of Tetris and lets him play. When they hear a knock on the door and fear it's the KGB looking for Hank, Alexei and Nina quickly hide him. After realizing it's just a neighbor asking for salt, Alexei tries to send Hank away, but Hank persuades him to continue their conversation elsewhere. Alexei takes Hank to a club where others hope for independence from the Soviet Union. As they all party and dance to the final countdown, Hank and Alexei start to bond. Unfortunately, the KGB has been spying on Hank and taking photos. They track down his family and threaten Akimi and their children at her workplace, demanding that Hank return home. Other KGB agents find Hank, assault him, and steal his Levi's pants. He returns to his ransack hotel room where Sasha arrives. She explains why the KGB is after him and tries to convince him to walk away, even unexpectedly kissing him before Hank reminds her that he is married. Later, Trifono confronts Alexei while he is with his sons Mitri and Peter, implicitly threatening him with the same fate as his father. In the meantime, Hank calls Akimi and instructs her to contact his lawyers. Both Hank and Steen return to Alorg separately. Steen complains to Belikov about the new contract but ultimately signs it. Hank confronts Belikov about the ongoing chaos and proposes a new deal, $25,000 in royalties up front and 25 cents for every copy of the game sold. Since Hank is broke and desperate, he estimates that Tetris could sell as many as 20 million copies, netting Belikov $5 million. Belikov meets Trifonov outside, who says that Tetris will go to Mirosoft. The two then meet with Kevin, and Belikov states that Mirosoft can have Tetris if they wire $1 million within a week. Belikov privately tells Hank to make his own offer within the week and gives him a letter of intent to sign. Hank is joined by Alexei, who rides with him in a taxi to avoid being followed. Alexei reveals what happened to his father, a university professor whose career was ruined after signing a letter of protest for a jailed colleague. Alexei shows Hank that Sasha is a KGB agent targeting him as a perceived threat, and they see her talking to Trifonov. Alexei then takes Hank to an airport. Hank misses Maya's school concert, breaking his promise to attend. Meanwhile, Maxwell meets with Arakawa in Lincoln to ensure Murasov gets Tetris. Following Maxwell's orders, Trifonov has one of his men assault Belikov. At his apartment, Hank receives a fax stating he's being dropped from the Tetris deal and a threatening photo of Sasha kissing him that could be shown to his family. Akimi and Maya arrive, with Akimi scolding Hank for missing Maya's concert. Hank, preoccupied with losing the deal and everything they have, upsets Maya, who runs to her room crying. Belikov visits Alexei at his apartment and informs him that Tetris will go to Mirror Soft, and Belikov will be removed from his position at Alorg unless Alexei can set things right. He gives Alexei a letter of intent to fax to Hank, which he does at work. Simultaneously, Kevin finds his father shredding documents, and when he asks for the $1 million needed for Alorg, Kevin reveals they don't have the money. After receiving the letter, Hank confronts Arakawa and Lincoln at Nintendo, showing them the letter. Hank then learns that Atari stole Nintendo's patent and is selling Tetris cartridges. He explains that Stain and the Maxwells lied, and the letter expired the day before, leaving Atari with no rights to Tetris. Hank convinces Arakawa and Lincoln to return to Moscow, with him to finalize their deal before the Maxwells can interfere further. Alexei discovers he has been fired from his job and finds people repossessing his belongings. He also sees Trifonov talking to his sons, Dmitri and Peter, making implied threats to throw them over a ledge. 
Trifano contacts Maxwell to continue their dealings. Sasha overhears Trifano scheming in his own favor against the country's interests. Later, Stane confronts the Maxwells by punching Kevin for trying to make the Allure deal behind his back, depriving him of his payment. Maxwell reads the documents and plans to head to Moscow with Kevin to personally speak to Gorbachev and undermine Hank. Upon his return, Hank tries to find Alexei, who refuses to see him due to everything he lost by working with Hank. Nearby, Trifonov and his goons learn of Hank's return and hurry to Alorg. The Maxwells arrive at Alorg for their deal, but Hank, Arakawa, and Lincoln soon appear. Maxwell orders Belikov to sign, but Hank deduces that the Maxwells can't pay Alorg. Belikov sees through the deception and refuses to sign. Maxwell tries to attack Belikov, who headbutts him in response. Belikov signs with Nintendo and orders the trio to leave Moscow immediately. Trifonov confronts Maxwell, revealing his dishonest dealings in front of Kevin and Sasha after losing the contract. Trifonov pursues Hank, Arakawa, and Lincoln, but Alexei arrives to drive them to the airport. A high-speed chase with KGB goons ensues. They reach the airport and board the first flight out. Trifonov mistakenly boards a flight to Tokyo, only to be arrested by Sasha for treason. Back in Tokyo, Hank creates a makeshift stage for Maya to make up for missing her concert. He apologizes in Japanese, and she performs for him and Akimi. He shows them the $5 million check for bulletproof software. Later, the Game Boy is released with Tetris, selling out twice in Japan before its US release. Gorbachev resigns and European borders open. Hank sends Alexei his own Game Boy. Eventually, Alexei and his family move to the US, where they are greeted by the Rogers family. Hank and Alexei embrace. The ending text reveals that Hank Rogers and Alexei Pajitno formed the Tetris Company. Robert Steen continued to license games but never recovered from losing Tetris. Robert Maxwell stole over $900 million from pension funds and accrued over $5 billion in debt, leading to his media empire's collapse and his mysterious death. Kevin was later arrested in connection with a the theft, declared bankruptcy, and was acquitted of fraud. In 2014, Hank appointed Maya as the new CEO of Tetris. With over a billion units sold, Tetris remains one of the most popular games of all time. Be sure to show some love to those hardworking creators and artists by watching the entire movie at the link in the description below. You wouldn't want to miss out on all that cinematic magic now would you? Thanks for watching and hey, while you're at it, why not give that like button a little tap and subscribe for even more of these oh so rapid movie recap. Trust us, you'll love it.